Hi, guys, and welcome to the Suit Up Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Adkins. Thanks you again so much for joining us today. Uh, again, I always like to get a little bit of the business done on the front end. We appreciate the subscribe to the channel and like of our podcast. We love comments. We're getting great feedback from our audience of things that they've enjoyed about the podcast, some up and coming ideas for future hosts and subject matters. We definitely love to interact with our audience. Uh, so again, thank you. And also would love for you to watch all the way to the end because we always put some important information from me personally at the end of our episode. So today I have the great pleasure. This is a great friend of mine. I've known for quite a short time as we were discussing, but we're like, man, I feel like it's been 20 years, but Mrs. Caroline Kalensos. Hello. How are you, sweetheart? I'm so good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with me. I'm really, really excited about this episode. Uh, we always have such a in-depth conversation. We do. No matter where we're at, you can it's find like, us just like, tell me more. Right, right. It's tell like, me everything. We're in this, we're in this tunnel, <laughs> yes. right? And we're so focused and we're talking about, you know, big things, big dreams, mm -hmm. you know, and I love being able to have that, you know, dialogue and conversation with you I every do. time. And I feel like that even if it's a period of time where we don't see each other, we see each other again, we pick up right where we left off. We do. The last time I saw you in person was like over a year ago. Yeah, exactly. Free I was, baby. Right. <laughs> Right. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank so so you. share a little bit about little baby. He's the sweetest. Little baby Christos. <laughs> I love it. Uh, he's the sweet. Three and a half months. I cannot believe it. And it's crazy. It's like when I really think about it, I never, not that I never really wanted kids. I always thought, okay, if God wants me to have babies, I'm going to have babies. Right. And so I had my first baby at 36. And I'll tell you, it's the best way to do it. You get, you, you're called geriatric, by the way. You're in a geriatric wing. Wow. Let me tell you. But it was great. I got the VIP treatment. <laughs> Everyone took care of me. No, it was, it was wonderful. And he's the best. And I, I love, love it. it. Well, congratulations on, on that. And I wish nothing but wonderful health. And I can't wait to, you know, I haven't even met him yet. But just, I know. Just two, like two ships passed in the night. It is what it is. So now let's, we haven't even talked about like, Caroline, what do you do? Oh like, my gosh. What share share with the audience do? a few things that you do. So I wear a lot of hats. Mom is my newest hat. Um, but I am the boss doll and CEO of Posh PR. I love it. And Posh PR is really my first baby. Can you believe we're going to be, Posh PR is going to be 10 years old in January. Unbelievable. Has it been 10 years? Act yes. Wow. 10 years old, um, January 14th, which is actually National Dolls Doing Business Day, which is my new holiday. I have been trying to get this national day for years, and then finally, finally, so I'm so excited. And you know, when I really think about all, the, all of the things that Posh PR does, I mean, truly at the end of the day, we help entrepreneurs make money. Hey, <laughs> y'all gonna love this podcast today, I'm gonna tell you what. Yeah. So obviously, you know, Posh PR is where you're at today, but that's not where it started. No. And so I, I love not kind either. of digging back. So we, we at this podcast, I, I try to highlight that entrepreneurial journey. And, you know, you can start wherever you kind of feel would be good. You know, we don't have to start back from when you were a kid, naturally. We well, all I have, might. The, I have oh, I have a oh, thought about that. <laughs> there you go. So it's it's really kind of that journey and, and what got that fire and passion, you know, when you knew you were going to be an entrepreneur. And then as we talk a little bit about your journey, you know, we're going to deep dive into some of those things of like, oh, 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 what about that right there? So mm -hmm. take it away. So it's such a great question. Okay. You know, Caroline. You're an entrepreneur. I bet you always wanted to be in this entrepreneur. People ask me this all the time. They see Posh PR and, and the success. Thank you, Lord. And But I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> I never, I didn't. <laughs> um, my mom would tell you otherwise, though. And, and here's how we will take it back. She will tell you, if she were here right now, that my first business, I started when I was three years old. And I was selling my crayons to the kids at school for quarters. <laughs> so, there you, go. Um, you know, I, I would literally, I would come home from school with my dress pockets filled with money. <laughs> and, and my mom would be like, Caroline doll, Caroline doll, baby, where, like, where did you get this? And I would say, mama, I'm, I'm selling my, and, and, and in, oh, in Kentucky, you say, you call crayons crayons. Okay. So I would okay. say, I'm selling my crayons, crayons. at school. <laughs> and it. she had this parent teacher conference, the whole thing. They're like, Caroline is telling other kids that her color red crayon is better than theirs and they're buying it from her. <laughs> you were an entrepreneur so, from the start. It's so funny because when you think about PR, it is my job to tell the media that my client is better than everybody else. Right, so right. you really think about it. I've been yeah. doing this since I was three. And then I had, um, when I was like 16, I had a babysitting club 
in the neighborhood and I would basically hire babysitters and send them out on, on jobs in the neighborhood. And I guess I never really thought about that. And then in college, I had Couture Closets by Caroline. And it's just crazy to think about truly. And I really didn't think about it until you asked me to join this podcast. And I was like, you know what? Before Posh PR, I did a lot of other things. Right. Um, but even truly before, right before Posh PR, you know, let's talk about more of like my professional background. Sure. Um, when I was in college, I went to VCU. I transferred from Kentucky. And um, it was the recession hit when I was graduating college, 2009. Mm -hmm. 2009. Wow. I don't know why that seems so long ago <laughs> right now. And, you know, all my friends were moving back home. And well, I already, full disclaimer, I already lived at home with my mom because I wanted to. And I, and I, my mom was my DD. It was great. She just, she drove me around. She and my poodle. It was awesome. But yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was living at home and I, I, I started writing letters to big pharmaceutical companies telling them that if they didn't hire me to be one of their drug reps, that basically their businesses would fail. <laughs> so you were doing, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> You were selling yourself that you were better yes, than anything. So you were doing the same thing. I was. Yeah, and I love so it. so no it. one was responding to me. I was literally sending letters to HR of like Pfizer <laughs> and like right, Johnson right. & Johnson. <laughs> and finally, one one HR department called back and they were like, um, Caroline, yes. So we, we, we kept this letter on file. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, perfect. Yes, that letter. I was like, I am so, you know, she was like, we, we need it you need to come in we need to interview you. So long story short, my, my first job out of school was in medical sales. Okay. And it's just crazy to think about that journey and to think that I, I was in medical sales because now what I do is so different, um, you know, the medical sales. But honestly, you know, so many entrepreneurs, they 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 don't like their full-time job. Come on now, here we right? go. We're gonna get, here they, we go. They typically don't like their full-time job. Yeah. But I loved I loved medical sales. Really? It's so, so it's crazy. I mean, I will never forget, like, I just, I was, I was the best and that's it. And, and, and truly I wasn't the best because, let me digress. I was the best because I wanted to be the best and I believe. You had the drive. I, and I believe that yeah. in anything that you do in this world. Come on now. Anything. Crush if, it. if you want to be the best, mm -hmm. it is a choice that you make every single day. You wake up and you decide that you're going to be the best. You're going to be the best mom. You're going to be the best dad. You're going to be the best in medical sales. You're going to be the best in Posh PR, whatever right. it is that you're going to do. Right. Um, no, I love that. And, you know, at such a young age, gosh, I mean, I, if I'm 36 now, I was 26. I was a national sales manager making $400,000 a year. And, and I'm only saying that out loud <laughs> because that's an important part of my journey because I I quit cold turkey. <laughs> I, I literally, so I'll never forget the day. I was on a pink flamingo pool float. It was 12 o'clock on a Tuesday when I lived in West Broad Village. I was at the pool and I, I'd already hit my sales goals. So essentially, I didn't really have to work that hard right. because I hit my goals. And you know me, I, I like to work. I, I, you need the challenge. I need to be challenged. Yes. I, I like a challenge. Of course. And I remember calling my mom and I was like, Mama, I want to help female entrepreneurs live their dream life. And she was like, oh, Caroline doll, baby, like, <laughs> you just bought this half million dollar town home. Like, right, right, right. you know, it's the big dreamer. Right. Like, right. And I was like, no, no, no. I, I want to do everything I'm doing in medical sales. And, and to digress, I, I worked for a company that, um, that launched new drugs that brought okay. new drugs to market. Okay. So my role specifically was working with the research doctor and branding the drug, writing the sales copy, hiring the sales team, training the sales team, and really putting the putting the pretty bow on it. A hundred percent. Well, that's kind of no, elementary, but, true. but it essence. is what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's elevating, um, and not only that, with with in in the medical world. The FDA will regulate a drug a certain way, but it it does different things. And there were things that some of my drugs did that I couldn't say out loud that they did. Right. So we had to market them in different ways, which was it was a challenge. And, and so that's I think what I liked about it. But of course, on this pink flamingo pool float, I said, "Mama, I I want to take my God given gifts because I believe when you take your God given gifts mm -hmm. and you marry them with what you're passionate about, you're unstoppable." And so I'm passionate about empowering women. I'm passionate about, you know, fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and helping people find their true potential and, and, and bringing that out of them. And so everyone can live their dream life. 
Absolutely. You're and, able to ask the right questions. Yes. Dig into their lives and say, hey, do you see the undiscovered whatever it is? Yes. Bring it to light. Because so many of us are darkened by either careers, yes. lifestyle, things that are going on in our lives, past experiences mm -hmm. that will put us in a box. I love that you said that. And not only put you in a box, but make you feel like you're not worthy. Mm. Of, so this is actually an interesting, you know, something I was thinking about the other day, obviously, so I, I have a little boy now, and being a mom is something I have to now think about. And of course, it's right. It's important. Um, but, um, you know, so my, my nephews, they, you know, they're, they're a little, obviously a little bit older than Christos, but so Rocco, when he started to walk, I remember seeing Rocco in the living room, he started to walk, and he would, you know, hold onto the table, stand up, fall, and then roll over, get back up, hold on to the table, stand up, get all excited, and then fall, and then get back. And I was thinking to myself, wow, we were born with something inside of us mm -hmm. that said, when, when you fall, you are naturally supposed to get back up. And that was the coolest thing to me ever, to watch this little boy right. fall, and no one was telling him to get up. Right. He was just, there's something in his soul that said, Rocco, get up. And I just think that, you know, so many people are put into this box yes. and so many people feel that they can't get up and they're told mm -hmm. they're not like, and they believe it. But I just, I, I just wholeheartedly believe that if you genuinely want something in this world, get up. The only person telling you to stay down is you. 100%. 100%. And there's also some some truth to being careful as to what you listen to, what you watch and and what you're feeding your soul with. It's important. During those times, but 100%, yeah, it's it's yourself can be the biggest person to hold you back from greater things. It is. So you're you're in the pool. You're saying <laughs> yes, I'm in the pool. I know I'm quitting the yeah. job, I'm quitting the stability. Yep. I'm going to, you know, take a little risk. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not really a little risk, a big risk. It was scary. And I'm going to start a business. Yep. So, you know, I'm sure it was just a piece of cake, wasn't it? <laughs> it's, I always joke because it's like everyone sees me, like everyone sees the G-Wagon, but they don't see when I was, you know, I was selling my dining room chairs to pay my mortgage, <laughs> you know, eight years ago, nine years ago, I guess mm. now. You know, they, they see the success but they don't see, they don't see the, the, grind. the journey and the, you know, the tears and the, the hustle, but no. So, you know, it's funny. The first thing I did after that pink flamingo pool float was actually, I invested in a tool skirt. This is a real story because I decided, and again, this is 10 years ago. There, there wasn't really like now your people are the face of their brands. You know, a lifestyle brand is a thing now, right. but 10 years ago, it wasn't. If you had a PR agency that did public rela relations and social media and all these things, like you weren't the face of your brand, but I bought a tool skirt and told my mom that I booked a photo shoot and I was building a new website and that I wanted to be throwing confetti in a tool skirt on the homepage of the website. And she thought I was crazy. <laughs> she literally was like, honey, honey, what? Like, what are you talking about? It's like, no, no, mama, it's gonna be great because people want to see me because they're hiring me, right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's what I did. I mean, I think of my, I wish, I need to, I need to send you this photo of my first, I found it, um, it popped up on Facebook, you know, memories the other day. And I was like, oh my goodness, there I am just, <sighs> Like blowing my confetti into the world, <laughs> saying, please, somebody hire me. But you me. believed in yourself. You, you believed <laughs> in your did. journey. You believed in yourself, even if no one else does. And that's really, really important. It is. That you sold yourself, you sold out to the passion of what you wanted to do. And that, yes. and that's, you know, you can't take it halfway. This is true. And also, I, I will say, you know, I, I was really good at my job in medical sales. And one of my doctors in L.A. actually called me when he found out I started Posh PR. And he was like, Caroline, listen. So my daughter, my, my daughter is getting married in the same ballroom that you planned this event for, you know, the, your drug company that you worked for. I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Like, I'm like, why is he telling me this? This right, is right. great. And he was like, um, you know, I, I want you to plan her wedding. And I said, <laughs> wedding well, planner. <laughs> I was like, well, oh, well, no, no, no. At the Pelican Hill Resort, they, they have a lot of well-paid people on staff that plan events there. He was like, yes, no, we already talked to Michelle. Like, 
we told her we want you we want you to and and i told him i said listen i dr carl i've never been to a wedding <laughs> i've literally never been to a wedding it's like no i figured you'd say that but i researched what la wedding planners charge and i'm gonna pay you X this, amount of this figure and i said yes sir i'm on when the do way. i start I said, sir, I, I am on the way. What is your daughter's name? I can't wait to hug her. <laughs> Literally. So, I love it. And, and, and so I do believe that you do need to go where the money is. Of course. And, and, and I do believe that. And, and honestly, but also I like a challenge. So yeah. I, it wasn't just about the money for me, obviously. You know, I had left my medical sales job, but I wanted to be challenged. And I'll tell you, it's crazy because I never wanted to be a wedding planner, but I became known as producing these high-end weddings these multi-million dollar weddings and it was kind of cool it was really cool but what what i really learned from that that really helped me on the pr side of my business was thriving in chaos <laughs> and if anyone that ever applies to work for me says that they've ever planned a wedding i'm like girlfriend right here let's go i i want you because if you can plan a wedding successfully i believe you can do anything i was going to say the amount of you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I look at, and, and obviously I'm married too and went through the, yeah. the planning of the wedding. There's so much emotional involvement. It is emotionally. It's hard. not so much about practicality it's anymore. Not. It's out the window. It's all emotional based. All emotional. And, you know, I really liked planning weddings. But what I didn't like about it was me as, as a natural born salesperson, I didn't like that I couldn't continue selling them something. Ooh. And I know that that sounds weird. Because it's a defining <laughs> end. The Be wedding's over. The wedding is over, and I've spent a year making these clients love me and making them happy, going above and beyond. And, and yes, I mean, obviously getting paid well, but I then had to start over from scratch, and I couldn't sell them anything else. Yeah. That's and a great... Oh, man. right. That makes so Just much sense from a monetization standpoint. And, you know, really someone who I'm actually really nerdy. So it's like funny. Everyone like looks at my Instagram <laughs> and they probably think I'm like drinking champagne all day and like right? eating. She's like, no, I'm strategizing the entire time. I, I have a method to all my madness. I do. Right. Of course. I mean, course. a specific method. And it's not pretty like Instagram. No, like, no, no, no. That, and that's a bookmark right here. That is a great point that what you see is really the after effects of all of that like minutia and sweatpants and oh, yeah. right and just grinding it out and method to the madness and scheduling and all of that kind of stuff. But we want to present and when we're playing at this level, like for both of us, you know, it's so important about how we present ourselves. 100%. And I don't mean that in a, you know, surface way. No, for sure. But, but you're playing at a certain level. You need to present yourself in a certain way. You're in front of enough eyes and enough people that there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that is to put everything out that we do. It is. And it's so funny because something like true story that people probably don't know, I hate my content days. <laughs> I hate because because the whole time I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, I need to be doing all these other things for my clients and helping them make money. Yes, I understand that my content days are important and me behind the camera is important to help the business overall, you know, make money. But it's it's just so funny to get me behind the camera. Literally, like M will be like, hey, I, I blocked off your calendar like I called your husband. You, I told him, you you are going to be here. <laughs> yeah, like, you've okay. got to do some content. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Well, and, and it's because we've become so focused on our externals or our businesses or helping others that, you know, and I've, I've said many times, sometimes you've got your head down and you're so focused that you forget about, oh, yeah, I've still got a post for the day. Oh, my gosh. I love that you said this. <laughs> so, And it's so crazy when I think about it. I mean, I have 12 full-time dolls that work for me, right? And you would think that I could have one of them doing our internal projects. And one of them, her job is to do that. But of course, I get so excited about a new client project that I'm like, listen, all hands on deck. Everyone right, just right, right. like anything you're doing internal, let's pause it. Hands on deck for the client. And you're right. I mean, you know, in a service based business, I think the, the, the best thing to remember is it's not about you. You were, you were there to serve. And oh. Here we go. And, and I always joke about this, but not really like, I, I like being the help. And I might be the help wearing Valentinos or Christian Louboutin heels, and that's okay. Yeah. I am still the help, but that's my place. That's my business. I'm here to serve. I love that. And I think that, you know, so many people say, Caroline, oh my goodness, you know, how do you know 
like how you know all the things like how do you know how to make money how do you know what to charge a client it's like it's not about that it's about can you serve your client can you look them in the eye and tell them how much you're about to charge them that's triple what everyone else is giving them a quote for but them saying right back to you you're worth it to me absolutely you know why because you have established the value in what yes. you're doing yes over I a period of bumps. i know it's, it's, I did too. I was like, it's establishing value. People always say, you know, when you ch- say this is what my charge is and people complain about it, this, that, and the other and cheaper, I'm like, well, then they haven't established enough value. Correct. It's no different than luxury brands. Yes. It's the establishment of the value. I love luxury brands and yes, they are very expensive, but you can work towards getting them or you understand that they they come with the reputation and all those types of things. Yes. So they've established the value. So I, I love that you said serve. Mm-hmm. So we're going to dive a little bit further into the, into the serving aspect of it, because I feel like a lot of, even what I do, and I know you can speak to this as well, from social media, being involved in the Silver Fox Squad, even doing the podcast. Yes, they're great. It's a lot of fun. You're in front of a lot of people, a lot of eyes, you know, a lot of buzz, everything like that. But approaching it as that I'm trying to serve others. But you are. And I think you do that so well, not to like start interviewing you. No, but. no. Hey, <laughs> Take the show whichever way. (laughs) But you do that well. And I feel like when you represent a brand, and I can tell because this is what I do for a living, but like I think other people can tell too. You fully embody that brand and like whatever sponsor you're working with or whatever you do because I know you, you are not, you're always going to go the extra mile. You, if, like, if I ask you to do something or if anyone asks you to do something, True. you're going to, you're going to do what you said you're going to do and more Yeah, and more because I want to. And that's how I am. And that's why I think that we just vibe so well together yes. because we, we're going to show up mm-hmm. and we're going to go extra. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, even to look, what am I wearing today? Do you know why I'm wearing this? I love because, it. Because of my great friend here. Aww. She loves all about the color pink. I do. Everything is all about pink with it Posh is. PR, been to her place, see all the things. I'm like, she's got it on like 10. And, and I know, love it. You know what's funny? When I started Posh PR, and I don't know if you know this or not, but when I built this brand, okay, you know, picture the tool skirt, picture the confetti, and then picture the color pink. It's still, you know, to this day, yeah. I still have tool skirts hanging in, you know, in my office and all the <laughs> things. But I was told that I would not be able to build a successful brand and make money, and no one would take me seriously if I kept incorporating the color pink into my business, and you know I love Barbie, and if I had Barbie on my wall, or you know I have a Barbie doll on my desk right now. (laughs) Actually, I have have a lot of Barbies everywhere in my office. Don't you have a picture of Barbie over the mantle? Everywhere. Living room? Oh yes, and I, yes, and so, you know, it's, it's just really funny to think about that because Right. People, people just, they judge you. Caroline, it's not their responsibility to know your vision. Exactly. And they have no say. And to me, that eggs me on. Oh, me too. I'm oh. like, oh, oh, I'm not? Yes. I'm not going to be able to do this because yes. of this, this, and this? Mm-hmm. Hold this. Same. Watch. Oh, even even my husband knows. If he says, hey, babe, you can't do that, I look at him. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Accept. No, I'm like, tell me what I can't, can't do. <laughs> and he's like, babe, no. I'm not saying that you can't take the trash down the hill. I'm like, no, it's fine. <laughs> if I do it, I'm gonna be yeah. the best. I'm like, because I, I will be. It. I will, and and that's what it is at the end of the day. Because you have to have a servant's heart. You yes. have to, and that's just the truth. Okay, so so it's so much more about you. It's not about you. It's about who you're serving. Yes. And and I love that the more you serve others, that naturally opportunities come. They do. And I believe we all know, and especially Caroline and myself, that it comes from above. You know, we are both very much faith believers, and God directs our paths. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that with great responsibility of the, you know, platforms that we're on and as we're growing, and we are trying to serve, yes, more things are going to come our way and opportunities. But being able to look at it and look at it as, okay, it's not about me, it's about serving others. But while I'm serving others, I'm going to be the stinking best at what it is that I'm doing. And I take great pride in being able to do that. Like, if I'm going to show up, I'm going to show up to the max. Absolutely. When I started this podcast, I was like, look, when I did the studio and everything, I wasn't coming out like, you know, baby steps. I was coming out (laughs) swinging for the fences, right? And it's I think it's something that it's it's within an entrepreneur type spirit. Mm -hmm. It's that fire inside. Uh, You know, I think entrepreneurs, you know, I was just meditating on this, like entrepreneurs is about serving, is about service. 
is about helping others. Because obviously, as an entrepreneur, you've got so many things going on in businesses, and you're trying to grow those brands. How do you grow those brands? Mm-hmm. Through relationships. Exactly. So sp- speak on relationships. Like, how important I is relationships love to you? That. I love that so much. Because in this social media-driven world, mm. and I, I literally was just in Nashville with a client talking about this, social media is amazing. I, I'm not saying it's not. I run a social media agency. You are, <laughs> you're a big deal on social media. You know what I mean? I mean, social sure. media is phenomenal. It's a platform. It's a it platform. is a platform. But at the end of the day, now don't freak out when I say this. I say this to myself and I freak out a little bit. What if Instagram was gone? I, no, I love that. Like what you got left? What if it was gone? What have you built? Do you have their email address? How are you going to contact your people? You know, are you, you know, do you have, you know, relationships with people that you can connect with? Yes. You know, so I think that, that it's just so important and relationships, yes, they are so important. And yes, how you develop them now can look differently. You know, you and I obviously haven't seen each other in person for however long, but so from a social media standpoint, we're liking photos of each of other course. and commenting. We, we stay engaged. And we you st- can stay engaged. Staying engaged. Yes. And, and you know, engagement on social media, I think, is so, like, overlooked. You know, it, it actually, it means a lot. When someone takes the time out of their day mm-hmm. to actually like and write a comment on one of my posts, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, they took the time. I to so it. appreciate that. You know, everyone is busy. And, and to take the time to do that, to say, hey, girl, like, I support you or whatever, like, that is so impactful. And to me, that just goes f- just beyond a little, you know, sure, do I like all, do I, do I look at Instagram and I'm like, how many likes did this photo get? <laughs> Which is not good. I should not say that out loud. But we Sister, all Sister, we've it. all done it. Let's just be <laughs> honest. You know, I mean, it is what it uh, is. But no, relationships are so important. And actually, it, it, this actually made me think <laughs> of when I was in medical sales and you know, my job was to build relationships with doctors. That was my job, to sell the drugs. And all of my counterparts, this was prior to me becoming the national sales manager. This is when I was, you know, just a a normal drug rep. Um, All my counterparts had a certain objective, uh, and I guess let's call it approach, Mm -hmm. to how they liked to um, build relationships. And not all of them, but a lot of them liked to flirt with the doctor and go that direction. And that just wasn't my jam. I just wasn't my jam. So you could find me shopping with the doctor's wives at Tiffany and Company and Saks Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus. So I went to the country clubs and I started finding the wives of the doctors, becoming best friends with them, getting invited into their inner circle, and then the wife saying, whatever she's selling, you're prescribing it. (laughs) So that was my approach. Outside of the box. But, you know, thinking about that, you became more of the family. For sure. You just didn't become the sales rep. You were, yes. I want to I want to establish that long-term relationship. Yes. I want to be able to show the value that I bring. Which is why one of my doctors, even when I pivoted, so this is what's so important about relationships. If you genuinely build relationships, no matter what you do in this world, no matter how you pivot your business, mm. no matter what you sell or what you do, your people will come with you. You better write that audience, write your this stuff down. Your people will come with you. That's right. You you establish the right relationships and it's not built on, you know, surface. Correct. And it's built on a solid foundation. I, So many times. I've had people in my own personal life because my direction has changed drastically over the last seven years, probably. Yes. Oh, your your direction's changing, changing every daily. second. Right. My, mine is changing <laughs> daily. Yes. Right. But people are like, what are you getting into yeah. now? Not of what's funny though, and, and I'm sure you can appreciate this, is that it's the, the conversations of not what are you getting into now, it's all like Wow, what what great thing are you doing? Well, yeah, it's not like, that. Where pa- are you on TV next? Right, where are you? Right, it's almost the expectation. <laughs> yes, and and that was you know you go years and years of of grinding it out and nothing really happens and then all of a sudden you start to get a little traction and then a little more traction and then bigger things start mm-hmm. to happen. But it's odd that you can look back and see those that that are those uh, solidified relationships. Yes that as I pivot and I do other things, they're right there supporting me. They're coming with you. They're coming with. The coolest thing ever, I have a client right now who she's been following me on Instagram for years. And she always said, you know, one day if I start a business, I'm going to hire Caroline. And she never thought she'd ever start a business. She just said, I'm going to hire Caroline. (laughs) And I'll tell you, 10 years later, she started a business. She sent me an email and was like, Caroline, I have been wanting to write this email for 10 years. 
I'm starting a business and I have to have you and the PR dolls help me launch. I love this. And it's the coolest thing in the world because I I was planning weddings in the beginning and I was wearing a tool skirt and throwing <laughs> confetti. You know, they're just it's just crazy to think about, you know, but if you build a genuine connection with someone, yes. they will follow you anywhere. And it's amazing. It is. It, it really is. is. It, it is absolutely amazing to be able to do that. And it shows that for the success of an entrepreneur, it has to start with the relationships. Because you're not going to have any money and you're not going to have, yeah. you have a lot of time yes. and not a lot of resources. So, so speak to this, uh, Caroline, I'd love to get your take on, you know, there might be someone out here watching that is considering starting a business or doing something. Mm -hmm. And they're, of course, working that nine to five job. Oh, yes. So I always feel like, you know, and I've said many times before, keep that nine to five. Yes. But that off time when it's when I'm not working or those weekends, that's where we're. It, it is. And, and, you know, you have to make the decision to be OK with not being at birthday parties on the weekends and at the bar on weeknights. And you you if you genuinely want to make the decision to become an entrepreneur, you have your full time job and you're starting out you know, as a side hustle with, with your new business, this is going to consume your, your nights, your weekends and your vacation days. Like you have to be okay with that. And that's just, you know, something for me that even 10 years into the business, you know, I know that people probably think that I don't work as hard now, but <laughs> it's actually opposite. You're I'm not like, out on the flamingo no. float in I the mean, pool? I mean, I am, <laughs> only if they want to take a photo of me now. I'm <laughs> For content I, days. I am, I am, but it's, you it's know. It's different though. I, it I, is different, and yeah. if you. But by choice, Caroline. Correct. By choice. And that, and that is the, that is the point. And there are so many people that say, oh my gosh, I want to start a business. And I mean, I get calls and emails Literally, we, we get a new client inquiry in our uh, PR inbox daily. Thank you, Lord, for that. It, it's amazing. But I can always tell pretty quickly if they really want it or if they don't. Mm -hmm. Just and by the opening email? For the most part. Wow. I, I can, love that. Well, I've been doing this for a while, but <laughs> I really can. But I always get them on the phone. And, and I always say this. I'm like, listen, I can build you a beautiful brand. I can help launch we can build your website we can do your social media we can get beauty editors we can get you featured in allure magazine you know we can get you on the shelves of ulta but i can't get you out of bed so <laughs> if you're not going to meet me halfway and if and if i say i need you at 7 a.m mm. and you tell me you you aren't awake yet okay well do you want it bad enough you know i feel like if you want it bad enough, whatever it is, it it could be a business, it could be anything in this life. If you want it bad enough, you'll make sacrifices. Absolutely. To get it. Absolutely. And and you know, I said on a previous podcast, it kind of separates men from boys and it girls does. from ladies. You know, it's it's the defining thing. It does. It's it's for everybody, but not for everybody. One hundred percent. And I love the fact that you're like I can you can kind of pre-screen. Yes. And, and that's great because obviously that, you know, time is our most valuable resource. And you really want to pinpoint those that are, that have that grit and determination. Like when you were explaining that and you were like, if I need you there at seven o'clock, I'm in my mind. Okay, I'm there at 645. Exactly. Yep. Right. What do you need? When do you need? Because exactly. I want this so bad because I yes. want the time freedom. I want the choice. I know I've got to give up a lot, but man, it's something to be said at the end of the day that I'm like, I'm my own boss. Exactly right. Oh. Exactly right. And you know, I always ask this question to any anyone that we potentially work with, and I say, why do you want a business? Why do you want a business? So you answered that. that I love that. You know, you know, freedom of time, being your own boss, all of these things. But when someone says, you know, you know, oh my my dad gave me money to start something or I, I don't know. I mean, that's right. maybe a bad example, but just I, I had an inheritance and now yes. I want to do something with it. Or, right. and, but, but I don't want to run it. I don't want to be a part of it. Oh, I don't want to work goodness. for it. Can you guys run it all? And I said, well, yes, we can, we can, but you know, we, we, you know, I want, 
I want, I don't, if I wanted to create the business that you're bringing to me, I would create it. Right. You know, I want to, I want to elevate you to create your business. That individual, as soon as you said all that, I'd be like, no, if you're not a business owner, you're just an investor in another business so that you can be hands off. Great. Let's pivot you to be an investor. Exactly. You know, so, but you know, and success looks different for everyone. It's so true. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, now that you said that so many may try to emulate Yes. others and it may not be their true purpose or their true passion i love that and it will start off great but it will fail quickly for sure because it, it's not sustainable it's not and you know i always say you know when it comes to failure you know you're only failing if you give up 100%. right <laughs> and that's just the truth you're you're only failing if you give up. And don't get me wrong, I will tell you, there have been so many times when people told me, my family told me, or I even thought to myself, you know what, this might be too hard. Maybe I should just go back into medical sales. Oh, 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 CC people, <laughs> do you hear that? That that it's not all like perfect scenario. No. There, There is times where you have self-doubt. Oh my goodness. There's times where, you know, not all the income's coming in at the best time or, yes. or there's times where I'm like, are we even going to make it next month? Yes. Or where is the next client or all of that. So all of that to me, just to, to reiterate, it's normal. It is normal. Yes. Even 10 years in, <laughs> oh. even 20, however many years it is, <laughs> it is normal. But you know, something that's so important that I always, you know, connect, you know, chat with my clients on this. Are, are you working in your business to just pay bills this month or are you truly building a financial legacy? Are you truly building wealth? And what does that mean? And how can we pivot your business to help you bring in additional streams of income that are more wealth building streams of income? Because I'm not saying, you know, that you need to work less or, you know, whatever. You're still going to need to work, but are you working just to meet today demands and what are we doing for your long-term legacy I, goodness gracious mercy me that's important 100%. because most entrepreneurs don't have 401ks and they don't have money set aside for that like, how are you going to retire are you are you really going to be able to operate working 16 hours a day when you're 85 years old probably not i, I, I might say, be able to no i'm just kidding you uh, yeah, might be able yeah to. yeah I might, i'm like I will <laughs> you'll do, see us tell me that i can't <laughs> yeah exactly watch me no i'm just kidding but anyway yes. I, I look at it like i don't think entrepreneurs can really make it on one source of income oh i love that no you you can't i mean well i mean you you could but you're you're making basics you right. need to diversify yes you need to diverse one that, that is like the first thing that i do when we get a new client i'm like okay I know that you want me to get you featured on these magazines. I know you want me to do all these things for you, but I need I need to talk about the money. And it's funny because no one really expects me as a C, you know CEO of a public relations agency to start asking them about money. But I can't do my job and and tell their story if I don't know how they're making money. Mm. And, and and you as an entrepreneur can't on social media write a social media caption if you don't know what you want to say as a call to action and a hook to drive traffic to your website to get the money. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a 12 step process. It, it is. And you've got to be able to, and, and I love that it's kind of starting off immediately. Let's, let's talk about the money. Yes. Like where are the income sources? How are we, how are you making ends meet? You know, and I, I had a conversation with you before the show a, a couple of days ago and I was like, I want to find like resources of who's got the money that will yes. pay for this yes. so that it's not a new expense or not a new income. You know, I read somewhere or I heard somebody say that Sometimes it's easier to make an extra 10 grand than it is to save 10 grand. Ooh, I love that. So in me trying to cut 10 grand of expenses, let me go out and out earn the 10 grand. Let me go make a new 10 grand somewhere. And I think it's easier in this day and age with the opportunities that we have Mm -hmm. for resources and ways to make money. Yes, I think it's easier to make 10 grand than it is to save 10 grand. You have to think outside of the box, truly. There's that box. Got to get out of that box. (laughs) You do. Um, You just do if you and also you know really here it is if you want to make more money you have to first believe that you're worth more money Ooh, self-worth that's it Mm -hmm. because if you don't believe that you're worth it you're you're not going to you're capped you put it you put a ceiling right on yourself right there exactly and you're not going to ask for it so if you have an opportunity to be with a potential client Mm -hmm. and you're one-on-one with them pitching them or whatever that looks like in your business if you don't ask for the money, if you don't ask 
to close the deal. If you don't right, say, right, right. so does this sound like they keep the, going the, like this, Caroline? They're going, they're, they're trying, they're trying, yes. but they, they haven't like. Here's what I need. And, and you have to make eye contact with that person, mm. and you have to look them in the eyes and be confident. Because hey, that's establishing value, it right? It is. That I am worth what I'm asking for. Exactly. Oh, it's the entrepreneur journey. I'm telling you, there's so many things about this that can be unpacked and broken down to where, you know, as your agency that you go through and help people realize that. Excited to bring one of our sponsors to you today, Two Roads Had Company. Two Roads Hat Company has been an amazing company to work with. It is one of the companies that Silver Fox Squad uses, and we call it the perfect brim. They have a great versatility of looks in straw and in felt. I absolutely love Two Roads. It's a small business, which we love to promote, and it's made here in America. So this is a great opportunity for you to go to TwoRoadsHatsCompany.com and pick up one of your new perfect brims. So, you know, I... I often get a lot of requests from new entrepreneurs, up and coming females wanting to launch a lipstick line or <laughs> whatever it is. And they always ask me, Caroline, how, how can I make $100,000 in a year, right? Or, and that's their goal and I love that. Whatever your financial goal is, it doesn't matter what you want to do or launch or sure. even in, you know, whatever, you, whatever financial streams you have coming in, if you want to make $100,000 a year, you reverse engineer it, right? And this is what I do. And I don't know if this is crazy or, or what, but I say, okay, $100,000 in a year, there's 12 months. Let's divide that up. It's like $8,333. Repeating through 0.33 repeating. <laughs> exactly right. That's exactly right. That, that's an entrepreneur for you. When you ask, how much is $100,000? I'll tell you $8,333 exactly at 33 cents. But then you say, okay, how many clients can you actually serve in this month? And if you have a full-time job still, yeah. and this is your side hustle, right. you have to think, okay, maybe you can only serve four clients in a month. So then you have to divide that up into four and say, okay, this, so this is how much I need to be charging for my services for each of these four clients. And if right. I'm not charging this, I am not going to make my 100,000 revenue. Right. Right. And it's really that simple. You know, I had a client the other day say, hey, you know, she's a hairstylist. And, and let me just say, I don't, I don't know if anyone knows this or not, but hairstylists, they kill it behind the chair. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Kill it. She was like, hey, so I want to maintain my $550,000 a year. Okay, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Hats off to them, but they're standing behind that chair, though. Oh, they're standing. They're earning it. They are, yeah, they're yeah. earning it. Uh, earning it. Yeah, yeah, Working yeah. for that. And so we were talking about other ways to diversify income. What can we do? Let's Can we launch a retreat? Sure. Can we do all these different things? And so, um, and she said, hey, I don't want to work so many days behind the chair. How, but how do I do that? I'm like, it's easy. How many days do you want to work behind the chair? How many days in that month do you want to work? Okay, let's take that $550,000 for the year, divide it up by those days. This is what you need to be charging your client. So I, you know, I think when people think, oh, you know, I need to just try to close one deal at a time, one client at a time, I think that's wonderful. I am not discrediting that. You need to go, you know, one step at a time. Sure. But if you're not thinking about the big picture, and if you're not mapping out your financial goals every year, you're not going to hit them. How are you going to be able to scale? And how are you going to be able to hold yourself accountable? Mm. Because that is so important. You know, I am really nerdy when it comes to a spreadsheet. I'm in my spreadsheet. She's an Excel spreadsheet every diva. Every morning. <laughs> and, and anytime, and even when I had like this client that said, hey, I want to launch a retreat. She was like, I'm going to do all these different things. I want Posh PR to run it and all the things. And I said, no, 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 no. Can I go run the numbers first? And she starts laughing. She's like, I knew you were going to say that. I was like, no, I, I need to make sure you're going to make money first. I need to make sure you're going to make money after paying us. I need to make sure you're going to make a lot of money. Right. Because how are we going to know what to charge for each ticket price for the retreat if I don't know? I mean, I literally broke this budget down to like what I was anticipating our breakfast to cost. I mean, to the penny. And, and it's just... It, if you really want to build financial wealth and 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 build a legacy, if you will, you have to start getting comfortable with understanding your numbers, and and understand and not being afraid. I mean, 
don't be afraid to look at, you know, look at your bank. I need you to know, like I know to the penny how much money I have in my bank account at, oh, man. At, every day. You're reading my mail because, you know, I, I've got to digress for a second. My father was a sole proprietor, CPA. Okay. And he had the business for nearly 40 years. Okay. I worked in his office for 14 of those years. I don't know this about you. Yes. So I learned all about accounting, yeah. taxes, you know, all that stuff. I used to want to be an accountant. It, it, there's something yeah. about the numbers. Like, it's a we boring do. industry. Oh, I love but it. But the fact of what those numbers can create and Perfect. do, it's like the more detail that you have. So I use a an accounting software, mm -hmm. and I account for every dollar. Oh, so, every so, dollar. So at the end of the year, I know exactly what I spent at Starbucks and what yes. I spent at Target. Yes. What I spent, And it's so vitally important that just some – I guess I'm going where this is some good basics for people to kind of take some accountability of their dollars. Yes, and it's okay. It's okay to be afraid when you log into your Wells Fargo. You know, because I, I hear that a lot. Well, I don't. I don't like to log into my bank because I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And I'm like, no, no, no. You need to know. <laughs> yeah. Let and if it scares you, good. Yeah. That's let where you can make some changes. Let it scare you. You know, and if you're not setting, you know, every year I set a financial goal, you know, a revenue goal, and. I'll tell you, even right, it's at September now. Is it September? Oh my gosh. Is it yeah, September? middle of September. What? September 15th. It's September now. <laughs> and and I'm like, all right, Caroline, <laughs> you, you gotta hustle. You you need to hit your goal. You're almost at your last quarter of the year. I, I and so and that's good. You yeah. be you know, and I also I have a I have a CFO. Like I have but and she's she runs the numbers too, but oh, you better believe that I I run my own numbers and make sure we match. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, she's yeah, brilliant, yeah. don't get me wrong, but I need At the end of the day, it's your baby. It's your baby. It is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. And not only that, you know, I I do this for my clients, too. You know, we always say we become your business best friend, you know, at Posh PR, and that's just the truth. I mean, we're running the numbers for them to make sure that they're set up for success because not every idea is a good idea, and that's okay. Right. And you know what? Sometimes I have clients that say, you know what? I know that I'm not going to make money, um, you know, I, I, doing this initiative, but I'm going to gain brand authority and break even. I'm okay with that. Let's do it. You, as long as you're understanding your end result, mm. that's it. Any anything that I anything I do is very calculated. Whether that's a good thing or not. No, it's great. I, I'm very. I'm always like, okay, what is my end result? And I ask my clients, what is your end result? You you want to be featured in Vogue magazine? I love that. Now let's talk about the end result here. Um, brand authority uh you know do i think yes long-term financial gain 100 percent, but it's not instant you're not oh, instantly no. just going to have everyone go and buy your product you're building correct you're building and and sure you know it, it's a door opener to say you know we, recently my brain was featured in vogue so right. you should listen to me <laughs> so. yeah 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 because i have some authority in the subject exactly i i love brand authority there's a lot even of what I'm doing personally where I am, you know, went years of not getting paid, but I knew the end result was developing experience, yes. developing relationships, building the brand and name recognition, yes. all of that kind of stuff. And that comes at a cost it does. of either time and resources. So that's where you have to determine, is it really worth it? Mm -hmm. Are you really going to show up at 7 a.m.? Mm -hmm. And then being able to be calculated on watching your monies. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is phenomenal advice. And and I'm even like taking mental notes myself. Yes. This is one of those episodes where I'm going to go back and rewatch my own episode <laughs> because I'm like, oh, there's a nugget right there. There's yeah. a nugget right there. So looking at all of that. Mm -hmm. And, and we're at the point of, you know, entrepreneurship. I'm, I'm ready to do it. I am, uh, you know, watching my money, I'm determining that I'm going to get up and hustle. Would you recommend uh, adding, you know, um, for lack of better words, like individuals into your life that are specialty within? In other words, let's say it like this. Is it easier? I hear this a lot. I can do it myself and save the money. Or... I can hire someone to do I can it. Outsource and right. yeah. So no, that's a really great question. And I'll be honest with you. Sometimes we, I, I have conversations with entrepreneurs, and I, I straight up say to them, and I'm very honest. Even if it's going to mean that my company doesn't get <laughs> the money, it's okay. Right, right. I'll right. say to but them, but you're going to gain a reputation, exactly. Caroline. I'll say to them, hey, listen, d don't pay me for that. You have a full time internal, you know, employee that can do this. I'm, I'm going to send you an email of how they're going to do it, and. <laughs> Because if I don't feel like they're ready, because what I don't want is I don't, I, I really want my 
entrepreneurs to keep their money. I want the job is for them to be making money, right? right? And, and for me, I, I take their hard earned money, like that's so important. They're giving me their hard earned money to, to do a job and I don't take it lightly. So if I feel like they can save money, I, I tell them this. And so really though, it, it does come down to this though. If you make a list of things that you're doing in your business and I want you to prioritize them. And I want you to put the things that you really dislike doing at the top, actually. I want the number one thing that you dislike doing for whatever reason, I don't care what the reason is, outsource it. If you can, that is the first thing that you outsource. And you wanna know the funniest thing? You're gonna be really shocked when I tell you this. Here we go. I actually can't believe I'm gonna say this out loud. <laughs> the, one of the number one thing that I don't like doing in my business planning my outfits for i know you are gonna think i'm crazy <laughs> planning my outfits for like being the mc at an event or for anything when i'm like are you first, serious i know i'm like here i am telling like the king of, <laughs> of, of, of wardrobe <laughs> oh man I, I i it gives me so much anxiety and so and really i was literally thinking about this this morning i'm like okay, you know what I really just need to hire a full-time wardrobe stylist. It's because the, the crazy thing is we help our clients with wardrobe for their appearances, right. and I love doing that. But for me, and I, I think, and I don't know what it is, I think it's just, I literally, you know, as a true servant at heart, I really put myself last. And I, I put my clients first. It's just not about me. So then by the time I'm thinking about me, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to wear? What am I going to wear? <laughs> what am I going to wear? I love that. I would have never I know you that. wouldn't have. That is the funniest thing I've heard today. <laughs> I love that. And and ironically, that is one of the things that I enjoy I know. the most. I know that you do. It's so funny. I love that about you. Oh. My I, can I, Another secret. Costa okay. is going to kill me for saying this. <laughs> <laughs> my husband, Costa. I will have him shop for me. I'm not even kidding. I will have him go online. I'm like, babe, please help me find something to wear. And he'll be like, okay, babe, I'll do it. I'll do it. He's like, and he's this. good at it. We'll see. There you go. And so he likes to do it. You're feeding into his strengths, which is True. fantastic. And he's very, he's like you. Yeah. He's very fashion forward and, you know, beautiful. So it's just, but I love it's that. crazy, but no, but, but make a list of things. And if you really don't love it, get it off your plate outsource it mm -hmm. whether you're paying for someone to do it you get an intern to do it or you get your husband to do it right whatever it is find a way find a way because if your business is supposed to bring you joy oh if it doesn't then you're doing you're doing too many of the things that you don't like correct so how you need to make some changes and, and, and let people help you and honestly i struggle with this i will admit it I have a hard time delegating. I have a lot of employees, to, and, and a lot of times, they're, they're literally, one of my one of my dolls this morning, we were on a Facetime chat, going through a couple of things, and she looked at me. She said, "Caroline, stop. I'm I'm going to finish this. This is on my to do. Why are you in my document?" And right, I was like, right. "You're right. I'm sorry. I'll I let you do it. I get it. It's oh. just my baby. But yeah, even yeah. ten years in, but I, you know what? I want people to feel the way that I feel." I really do. I feel so blessed that I still, 10 years later, I still feel this sense of just joy and and excitement and love for what I do to the point where I have a full team and I still want to do it all. And it's not because they're not capable. They no, it's just you're passionate capable. about it. Right. And they know me. They, yeah. kn they know me. They're like, listen, I'm going to do it. I'm like, okay, you got it. You I got love it. that. I love that. Well, it's an opportunity that, you know, you're, you're allowing others to, to be a part of it. You know, you get to that point in your mind of sometimes I have to relinquish control to realize that not everybody's going to do it the exact way that I do Correct. it. But in order for me to be able to scale, in yes. order for me to be able to grow, yes. I've got to relinquish a little bit for of that. For sure. And really, you know, where I'm needed as the business best friend to my clients, I need to be on these high level calls with my clients where, you know, we're, we're worth strategizing. Your zone of genius. Your it, zone of yes. genius. Yes. And we're coming up with new ideas and, and, you know, and I need, they, you know, I need my dolls getting most of the work done. Now, don't get me wrong. Anything that goes to a client, I see first. <laughs> that <laughs> naturally, will never change. That naturally, will never change. Right. But, you know, you're exactly right. You need to be operating in your area of genius. And here's the thing. As an entrepreneur, if if you feel for, for, for even one second 
oh, I really, really don't love what I'm doing. And, and if you feel stuck, because here's the thing, if you feel stuck in your full-time career, you could feel stuck as an entrepreneur, but the best part about being an entrepreneur is you can pivot and you can change and you can go anywhere that you want to go with relationships, with leaving your, your, your legacy of, of multiple, you know, revenue streams with, with, I don't know. I just, I'm so passionate about helping people do this because they can do it. Oh yeah. They just well, can. it's you know I think one of the reasons why that that uh, uh, we get so passionate about it and you want it for others because you know the difference that it can make in their lives. One hundred percent. Because it can not only change theirs but it can change their families, the people around them. It can. It, it's the ripple effect, right? That I always love that you know the scripture where it says he left an inheritance for his children and his children's children. I and, was reading this in the Bible yesterday. Get out of here. Do not even go there. I literally and you know what I have to totally confess this too. When I was in medical sales, I used to come home from work and I used to tell my then boyfriend, now husband, obviously, I used to say, you know, babe, look at this deal that I closed. Look, look at this, look what I, and even when I first started Posh VR, I would, I would come home from work and say, look what I just did. And he looked at me one day and this changed my life and my business. Mm -hmm. He looked at me and he said, no, 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 Caroline, yes, you're great at sales. However, look what God did for you and look what God is doing for you. I am not going to lie. I mean, I just got tears in my eyes even thinking about that just now. That changed the game for me. The second that I gave my business to God, the second I did that, it started flourishing. Yeah, naturally. I, I mean, truly. <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing that the keeping the priorities there and understanding, again, yes. it's about service above self. Yes. And it's about, you know, giving it over to him and letting him kind of, you know, give you direction, persuade you in the right way, that what you should, how you should pivot your business, yes. all of those types of things. So you're you're within his will. And when you're within his will, I mean, it's it's the, the cap is taken off. And don't get me wrong. Some some mornings I pray every single morning um, for my dolls, for my clients, for my husband, just, of course, for all the things. Yes. And I'm like, Lord, please let this be in your will. <laughs> <laughs> I would really like this. I'd love for this to be right, in your right, will. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I laugh because it it could be in his permissive will, but not in his right. perfect will. Right. Right. You know. And I'm like, it's fine if it's not, but l let me down easy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I tell you what. Well, I tell you what, Caroline, we we've gone through so many yes. different you know uh, subject matters, and I knew we would. The time just flew by. It's crazy. It, it was almost so much that you know we could almost probably do a whole second episode. We could. And and I may you know bring you back if you would be Ooh. willing to come, and we might take one of these particular subjects and kind of really just dive a little yeah, deeper. Dig deeper. Let's do it. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, as we're wrapping up for the day on the show, I always like to kind of let the audience know, you know, how they can find you, some of the, the ways, the means, because everything you've said today, someone may be like, I want her to do my stuff. So you just never know. So go ahead and share with the audience. So you can find me in a couple of places, but obviously poshpr.com. You can also find me on Instagram in two places at the Caroline doll, as well as at poshpr. I love it. I love it. So one of the things I also love to do at the end is we do some fun rapid fire questions. Oh, they're fun. <laughs> they're fun. I promise. I promise. Because I didn't, I didn't tell her you these before. I, right. I love, I love getting the knee jerk reactions. Okay. So uh, the first one we'll do is, hmm, I've got some choices here. I like, oh, this is a good one. What is one app on your phone that you just cannot live without? Um, it's, it's the better sleep app because it's the only thing that will get my baby to sleep. <laughs> well, there, so the current life that you're in, yes. this particular app is the winner. 100%. So I was going to say, and you're wise. So there you go. You, you obviously, she, she, you didn't even hesitate. No. Oh, I know. That's the, he, when he hears that little doo doo doo, like he, he's out. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, see, that wasn't hard. No, was now, now that this one's a little deeper, Oof, Okay. but I, I'm really interested to hear uh, your response to this based on, you know, your lifestyle upbringing and, and being that hustler and, mm -hmm. you know, really going after it. What's the best advice that you would give to your 20 year old self Ooh, looking um, back when you were 20? Couldn't drink yet. Okay. 2020. Okay. So I, this is what I would say. Stay true to yourself and you have no competition. Ooh. That's it. That's it. Because no one else in this world can be you. You cannot serve others any better or let me, the way you serve people is your way. Is your way. Come on, girl. That's it. And, and for me, you know, when people ask me, you know, 
are you the best or you know i'm like yeah well yeah i am the best me I, I am the best i love it and i'm if i'm truly attracting my ideal client which i am i'm the best fit to serve them no one no one else can serve them like i do they just can't and that's right. just the truth i love that <laughs> and if you when you say true to yourself you genuinely are 100 percent your authentic true self no one can compete with that no one can be you but you that's amazing. There you go. That is that is the way to end the show right oh, there. Good. That was an unbelievable perspective because no one can be you. No one can be you. I don't need to compare myself to you no. because I'm me. And if the more I embrace who I am yes. and go after things based on who I am, I can be the best version of myself. 100%. I absolutely love that. Well, there you go, guys. That's our show for the day. I really appreciate you joining us. Again, Caroline, thank you so much for being with us. We will definitely be back because I think we've got some more things we can talk about here (laughs) to really help you as a young entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur or even someone right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Like, we're in the middle of it. Where do I go from here? So be sure to always to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And again, uh, thanks again. We will be seeing you next time. All right, guys, today's show was sponsored by my very own company, uh, Fox Edge Grooming Products. So we have a whole line of men's grooming products that I personally use and personally helped kind of formulate and come up with the idea and concept. We use all natural ingredients and believe you me, the whole line smells fantastic. I love it. Uh, Anybody that ever smelled it says, wow, this stuff smells great. So if you want to get your own Fox Edge hair care or beard line products, You can go to my website, which is www.stephenadkins.us. And of course, the link will be in the description below. So looking forward to seeing you guys with the Fox Edge. Appreciate you watching all the way till the end today. And thanks again for being a part of the Suit Up podcast. So we have a new way of support here at Suit Up with Patreon. Uh, You can subscribe in different tiers to support the show. The great news is that there's each has a different tier, and within that tier, there are different levels of access that you will have to myself, but all will support the show in a major way. So one of the tiers may be access to questions or interaction. Another tier may be an opportunity where you could submit photos or get some wardrobe advice. And even another tier, we may even be able to set up a personal Zoom call where you and I interact for 15, 20, 30 minutes. So these would be great ways that allows access to get some of those questions and some of the things that you'd like done answered. Now, naturally, if you can't support monetarily, we totally understand, but you can always subscribe for free and like and share our video with your friends and audience that you feel would enjoy watching Suit Up. So thanks again for joining.